and welcome to Destination Unknown, where the journey begins and ends. I'm Bill DeFoy. I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Michelle Hubbard. And Michelle, welcome back in here. Well, thank you. Happy almost Valentine's Day. Yes, indeed. It's just a few days away and we've got some candy. And as long as our cameraman can keep his, <laughs> his hand out, we'll be just fine. But I think that he can, he can restrain the uh, temptation for the next few minutes anyway. So uh, we've got our GPS all raring to go. So where are we headed today? Well, today we're going to head into love. Ooh. Because how, how of Valentine's Day, it seems yeah, like the thing to do. And more particularly, I'm thinking about exploring what keeps us from loving ourselves. Because, you know, we can only love someone else to the extent that it's familiar to us, that it's something we have to give. And that comes from also being able to love, which my, def my definition for love is being willing to be in the same space as... So are we willing to love all the parts of us? And until we are, it's hard to love all the parts of somebody else. Isn't that uh, kind of um, hard to do sometimes? Because we're probably the most critical of our own selves than we are of others. We can overlook somebody else's faults, but it's hard to get past that within ourselves. Definitely. And one of the things I was thinking of exploring with you today is kind of the rules we set for ourselves. Like, for example, I am breaking all of my rules by showing up on TV, no makeup, dressed casually, my hair back. Um, this feels very uncomfortable to me and it feels very wrong because I have an aspect of myself that says I'm not good enough. And so for me to deserve to show up, especially in this kind of a, a public way, the price of admission I have to pay is to look my absolute very best. So that way I won't be breaking cameras, offending people <laughs> with all of my not good enoughness. Well, I tell you what, as far as I'm concerned, you don't need makeup. But then again, what can you do with perfection, right? <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. And I don't believe it. You know, I'll find ways to deflect that, like an instantaneous thank you or, a, oh, thank you. And then in my head, I'm thinking, I bet he says that to everyone he talks to. That sounds like a line. That He doesn't mean it. He's just being nice. You know, all of these things are going in as a way to not receive it because in my mind, I have a rule and I'm not obeying it. Well, doesn't that come back to the point that I had made just a few moments ago that we are perhaps... The most critical of ourselves it it goes back to that and it also goes back am i willing to allow myself to show up messy i mean literally to my perspective and am i also willing to be in the same space as this little part of me that needs to be making up these rules because whoever decided i needed a rule maker and i needed to have rules is ultimately trying to protect me and trying to help me make my very best um, reaction when I show up in the world. And so can I love however young, however misguided maybe, um, however scared this little part of me is? Am I willing to kind of out that? And I, I must be saying yes, because that's what I'm doing right now here today. Well, it's interesting that we're talking about this because what's going through my mind right now is if you go back to some of the early television shows, and I love Lucy comes to mind in particular. She went to bed wearing makeup. She woke up wearing makeup. <laughs> what woman in the world does that? Well, and see, that that brings us back to where, where we talk about things like media images because, I mean, my gosh, you can see it on any TV show, you know? Um, and more and more um, things are, are kind of... Um, permanently made up about some of the celebrities that we are trying to live the same lifestyle as. Well, when I have my billions of dollars that I can spend on stylists and an on-staff cosmetic surgeon who has my makeup tattooed on so I don't have to put it on or it doesn't wash off. But in the meantime, you know, it's okay for us to be normal, average people who age 
who maybe sometimes eat things that aren't perfect and it shows in our tummies. Um, and that's a new lesson for a lot of us. Hello, me. Yeah, well, I think that's a lesson for anybody that is really truthful with themselves. Um, because let's, let's face it, we all have inherent flaws. Nobody's perfect, and that's why I have an eraser at the end of my pencil. <laughs> now, do you have any rules for yourself in terms of you have to follow this rule before you show up or to be love, able to love yourself when you show up? The one thing that I do have that's perhaps uh, common is the shirt that I wear. Um, I don't feel like I'm in the, the character that I would be representative of the media group that I represent if I didn't have the logo shirt. Now, that's not to say I haven't shown up without the shirt because I have. And a quick story, a, a few weeks ago, I had put the shirt among some uh, other shirts to be taken to the dry cleaners. And normally when I take the shirt off, I have it in a set spot that when I go to use it again, boom, it's right there, unless it's going through the laundry. But typically I wear it for a couple of hours and it's taken off and it's set aside for the next time. And I couldn't find it. I was frantic. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, can I so was, relate to this. <laughs> I was tearing through my place going, where is it, where is it? And I finally said, Psh, I give up and came to the taping without my usual shirt with the logo. And I was fine, but I felt like I was out of place. Here's the, the upshot to the story. I went home and I was getting ready to take my dry cleaning to the laundry and I'm sorting through the shirts. Okay, one, two, three. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the shirt with the logo. Breathed a sigh of relief. Now I just make sure that I don't put it with the laundry going out to the dry cleaners. So you have a, a rule about wearing your shirt. That's right. And um, you also are, are evidently able to relax and allow yourself to show up in a different shirt. Yeah, that, that was perhaps the point to the whole story is that I finally had to cave in and say, you know what? I'm just going to have to, to sweat bullets here and do it. But you know what? It, in the grand scheme of things, probably didn't make a world of difference. Well, you know, uh, when we travel in this place called the unknown, one of the things that's going to happen is we're going to be showing up differently than we ever have before. And a lot of times, because we're in the unknown, it's going to take us by surprise. So the more able we are to allow ourselves to just be us, however we are in that moment, the easier experience we're going to have and uh, the more generous experience we're going to allow in, in our exchanges with others. All kind of laced with this pretty pink, lovely emotion we have called love. Interesting that we're, we're talking about love because it's, it's Valentine's Day and, you know, a lot of people do have issues sometimes when it comes to Valentine's because they may or may not have somebody in their life and they may associate something bad with Valentine's Day, a breakup, whatever. And so you have to kind of get past that as well, too, I would imagine. Can get uh, past it and maybe include it. For example, what would be a great Valentine that you could give yourself? Because you know you as well or better than anyone else. What would be a way of you allowing you to be special felt on va Valentine's Day? I would probably go in for a massage. Ooh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and a nice dinner. That sounds like that would be a blast. And um, I've, I've known you long enough and heard enough stories that I have a feeling that wherever you show up for dinner, you're going to end up running into someone you know probably and, and have so. a story about it. <laughs> probably true. I've been known to do that. I've been... I mean, I've been in an airport in Houston, Texas, ran into somebody that I knew, and I've had other occasions where that's happened. And uh, my ex-wife used to say, I can't take you anywhere without you running into somebody. And she did not mean in your car. That's right. <laughs> I was trying to think of what I would give for myself that wasn't food related. 
because you know going back to how we were talking at Christmas time um, this would be a big treat for me you know okay you know maybe give me some chocolates so in thinking of something else I think that what I would want to give myself as a symbol of you know happy Valentine's Day Michelle is some affection you know I think I'm gonna give myself an extra hug on Valentine's Day and I've noticed that sometimes just holding my face oh right now my hands feel cold and that feels good <laughs> um, but touch I'm, I'm finding that that's a place that um, I can kind of let me know I'm with me and happy Valentine's Day is uh, that I think that's the gift I want to give myself well you know hugs are great to give and even better to receive and nobody walks away a loser that's beautiful did you make that up uh, it's an old story I just made up yes <laughs> no I've, I've known I've, I've used that saying for a long time and I probably heard it from somebody else yeah um, you know most important for me is that I made a commitment maybe a year or so ago to be willing to be on my side no matter how I show up and I want to continue that commitment and start breaking some of these rules or maybe disobeying some of these rules or may you know saying hmm how can we renegotiate this rule Michelle and, and allow you to be different, but also um, you, you know, underneath it, that's, that's still who we're going to end up being. And so really when we're talking about the aspect of loving yourself, that's part of the lift series that you have talked about here before. Right. And, um, you know, the, the ways to do that in terms of being willing to be in the same space as it, it doesn't mean necessarily go into affirmations you don't believe about yourself. And it doesn't mean you have to be in some sort of meditative Zen zone, but truly objectively notice what you're feeling today. For example, I feel sad and scared and then turn towards that. Take a pause with it. Give it a breath so that, oh, okay, my sad knows I'm not like I used to deflecting it down, pretending it doesn't exist, pasting on the phony smile and saying, I'm fine. I'm just mm. fine. Now, everybody tends to do that. And, you know, I, I uh, shared with you a video. And one of the videos that I've shared with you is a gentleman talking about when people come to you, what do they say when you ask them, how are they doing? And they'll say, fine, you fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, you're fine. Everybody's <laughs> fine, 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 fine. And we get caught up with that. And it's perhaps even better to be honest. Right. Um, the way I express it is um, if... If you were saying what the weather is today, you would have absolutely no qualms about saying, well, today's Wednesday and it's foggy outside. Well, it should be as easy for us to communicate our feelings to each other. Today is Wednesday and I feel sad. You know, and just like California can't be sunny all the time and not be experiencing a detrimental drought, we cannot pretend we're happy all the time and not get in some form off balance. It's okay for us to have um, our sad days, our stormy, maybe angry days. And they aren't really for an entire day, as it turns out. Especially when we acknowledge what we're feeling. It just kind of, you know, a wave we ride through to the shore. And... Well, you know, it, with that, when we can recognize and identify, I am upset because, fill in the blank, how can we get past that being upset? Or is it just good enough to recognize why we're upset? I don't know if we even need to, to recognize the why, because a lot of times that's going to be a story. You know, we have a feeling right now, you know, I have heaviness in my chest, tears in my eyes a lot of the day today. That's been my day today. And I could tell you it's because of I don't know what, but it's, that's what is. That's just what is. And I find that for me, the more I'm willing to just stay with that feeling, there's some little gift there. Oh, it's an awareness around I feel scared because there's some things changing in my home life. And how am I going to survive these changes? Hmm, okay, so I feel scared. How can I handle being with scared? Well, breathing helps a lot because my stomach gets all knotted up. And once I start breathing and moving a little bit, all of a sudden, hey, I have these opportunities right in front of me right now as Heritage Media. I get to see my friend Bill again. I get to be trained by my friend Paul again. I get to watch Robert and get to know him a little bit better and hear what his area of expertise is. What a great 
exuberant amount of life I have that now I can see and appreciate. But I had to ride through some of the gunky stuff. Well, it's interesting that you put it in that perspective because when I come to do these sessions with you, it's like I'm looking forward to sitting down with my friend Michelle and exploring different facets of life that a lot of people would probably just sweep under the carpet. And I think that one of the greatest gifts you can give someone is to be a safe place for them to show up messy. So I knew we were doing this today. So I kind of, I don't know, feelings were just coming up for me like as soon as I woke. And I, and I thought, you know, Bill knows what we're going to talk about. Robert and Paul and Bill are all my friends. I'm going to be who I feel like being today. And gosh, you know, this is a huge gift that you all are giving to me. And um, it shows you that maybe it's okay uh, to continue this sharing of who and what you are fully. Because if I didn't know that you guys are my friends and enough about you and your lives and, and, and who you are, um, then I wouldn't feel like fully sharing who I am today. So let's recap, if we could. We're talking about accepting yourself as you are, loving yourself, and being in the same space as. So how would you uh, summarize what we have talked about today? I would summarize today as um, be willing to love the parts of you that you may sometimes think you don't want to show other people. Notice if you have rules about certain ways you should show up when you're in public or when you're at work. And I'm not saying you want to do things that are going to jeopardize your job. But when you're having an interaction with someone, maybe instead of putting on the generic fine that just about none of us believe anymore anyway, say, you know, I, I'm feeling sad today and, and there's nothing you need to do to fix that about me, but um, I'm feeling sad. Oh, wow, that's interesting. You can admit that. I've been feeling kind of angry lately. You know, it, it creates at least a more authentic conversation. So, uh, yeah, bringing back to uh, what's the point, um, I would say the point is to be willing to allow yourself to be messy and be there for yourself when you are. Sounds good to me. If people wanted more information about what you have to offer and get into the other components of LIFT, which if I remember is love, integrity, thanksgiving, and... Um, facing fear. Facing fear. Yeah, right. facing fear. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, you can give me a call. My number is area code 805-814-6884. You can send me an email. Uh, my email is my first name, Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, last name Hubbard, H-U-B-B-A-R-D, then the number four and the letter U at gmail.com. And check out the uh, Heritage Media, HMG broadcasting.com website. All sorts of exciting things are going on there. You can uh, see about my show, Destination Unknown, that Bill and I do together. And also about all of the other content that this wonderful group puts out for your entertainment and also uh, your enlightenment. Well, very good. I couldn't have said it better myself. So thank <laughs> you so much. That's quite the compliment. Thank you're you so, so polished. Much. <laughs> you did that. You, boy, I tell you, you're, you're going to have a career here. <laughs> So, yes, uh, do join us there. And, of course, you can check out the videos on YouTube, but go to hmgbroadcasting.com, and all of the content is there for you to see. Well, we're going to put away our GPS for this time, and we'll bring it out on the next edition as we explore Destinations Unknown with our tour guide, Michelle Hubbard. I'm Bill DeFoy. You've been watching Destinations Unknown, a service of the Heritage Media Group. Woohoo!